Welcome to the Wednesday Bible study. It's such a joy to come to your homes. We have been um, this. Uh, I would say what uh, this Bible study uh, has become kind of a family affair. I don't know how more than three years when we have been doing this, and some of you has been there from day one, continuously following our Bible studies. And thank you for being a part of this study. And this is where you grow in the Lord. This is where you increase your spiritual capacity. This is where you lay your foundations and keep building your house. You know, Jesus compared um, to two foundations and he compared of your spiritual house has been built on a foundation. So you are every Wednesday and Friday as you listen to his word and do his word you are building your spiritual house on a good foundation but by now we know that storms will come crisis will come we know that it's inevitable but those who have grounded themselves in the word and do the word will definitely wither the storm and become victorious. Amen. So part 30, uh, Kings, Kingdom and Keys. And it's been a, a long journey, but we have learned a lot. There have been a, a, so much of impartation from this study. And I believe you, that you're practicing the Kingdom Keys. Shall we pray? Father, we want to say thank you. We stand here by your grace, not by our strength, God. Lord, we do everything purely by your grace, Father, not by our strength. And Holy Spirit of God, for all these years to continuously do this Bible studies, you have been the strength. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says your word. And Lord, thank you for being behind us, being the wind beneath our wings to travel this far distance and to do things what we have done. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If not for you, we wouldn't have been able to do this. Thank you for all the facilities that you have given us, provisions, supply, and your faithfulness. This morning, we commit this study to your hands. Holy Spirit of God, I dedicate and surrender my lips and my tongue, take control, Every word that comes out of my mouth be your words. And I pray that every heart be good ground and bear, bear fruit. Lord, they may, they may bring forth and bear fruit that is going to be evident, Lord. Thank you, Father, that every heart is going to be a good ground, I speak in Jesus' name, that none of the seeds that have been sown will be lost today but it will be retained to bring forth fruit in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone say Amen. Okay, so last week, quick recap. I told you that God sends you to this earth with a gift within you. And when you identify that gift, it is a key to open doors. Okay, so a gift of God is a key. Whatever gift that God has given you, start using it. You may start it small, but if you are consistent and you're faithful and keep using it, that gift will definitely open doors for you. Then we saw crisis is always an unexpected change. What is crisis? Is an unexpected change, a change you didn't expect. That is crisis. Crisis is unplanned, uncontrollable change we looked at last week and then we saw that managing crisis is determined by one's ability to manage changes and convert them to benefit so when crisis come uh, how, what is crisis is changes that you never expected so someone who is wise in the kingdom will learn how to manage the changes and convert them to benefit okay so um, let's start from there so 
I wrote saying nothing is more permanent than change. Okay, change is coming and it is permanent. Nothing is more permanent than change. Change is constant. Everything is constantly changing in and around you. So we can't avoid change. Change, whatever change that happens when you are not ready for it is a crisis, precious child of God. Okay, when you are not prepared and something changes in your life, it's a crisis. So when you when you see a few gray, gray ass coming, it's a crisis. <laughs> and you never prepared for it. When you're young, you thought you'll ever be glowing like this and black hair and you will be ever the same and you never expected for a change and then here and there, white gray hairs pops up. It's a crisis. So everything is changing around us, in and around us. It's constant, precious people of God. Constantly things are changing. You know, your, your skin is changing and ladies are crisis when they see wrinkles on their face okay and you know this this mic is changing the molecules in this mic is changing it's never going to be the same the chair that you're sitting the wood the molecules in the wood is changing everything is changing and if we learn to manage changes we will learn to handle crisis that's what i'm trying to teach you because crisis inevitable, we saw last, last week. Amen? Your cells in your body is changing. That's why we grow old. You know, when you got married to that beautiful, handsome man, and now when you look at him, he has gained 50 pounds. You know, there's a big belly in front of him, but when you got married to him, he was a slim, smart guy, and you expected him to remain the same. But everything is changing. So when we are not ready for changes, that when the change comes, it becomes a crisis for us. So trust nothing except God because everything else will change. Except for God, Everything else will change because change is inevitable. It's constantly happening in and around you. The man you married has changed. The woman you married has changed. The children you brought up, they have changed. And it has become a crisis because we never expected them to change. I'm telling you, be ready. Except for God, everything else will change. So when you create a mindset that nothing is supposed to change, you have created worry. <laughs> Did you hear me? When you create a mindset saying, oh, everything is not going to change in my life. Everything is going to remain the same and it will be the same as forever. And then you have created a mindset of worry because definitely things are going to change. When it changes, you are unable to handle it. The you know, secret to life is understanding it and accepting it. What? Change is inevitable. So someone who is ready for change, someone has already positioned himself for a change, that things are going to change, will handle life efficiently. I'm just giving you keys. When Jesus said, do not worry, okay, this is what he was teaching. Do not worry. Because how can I be without worrying pastor in this world? Because there is trouble in this world. So that is what I'm trying to teach you, precious child of God. How to live a life 
without worries, position yourself for change. Things in and around will be, will change. And then when you have positioned yourself and prepared your mind, when things change, you will be able to handle them because you've already positioned yourself. I hope that you are getting. So in the kingdom of God, you manage changes well. You cannot stop it. Changes are inevitable. You can't pray it out. It's inevitable. You get into a place, precious child of God, to manage it and it it does not manage you. Look, look here. When a change comes, I'm not using if a change comes. When the change comes, if you're not ready for it, it will manage you. That's when the change will create worry in you. And the worry will lead you to stress. And stress will create unwanted issue in your body. Why? You were never prepared for a change. You, you thought this, this thing will ever remain the same. So in the kingdom of God, a wise steward will always be ready for changes. So that when the change comes, he or she will manage it well. Okay, think about what I'm saying. When Jesus said, do not worry, he didn't say, problem will never come. So what I am teaching you through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God is when changes come. What is changes? Is unexpected changes, crisis. A change that you never prepared for is crisis, which is uncontrollable, beyond you. So, the, the changes are coming, it's constantly happening around you. You can't stop it, but you can prepare yourself for it. That's when you are in control of your life. Amen? If not, the crisis will, changes will control you, precious child of God. Suddenly the daughter whom you loved stopped talking to you because the in-laws have influenced her. Now, that change can drive you, dear mother or father, into depression if you, if you thought, my daughter will never change. This is why Jesus said, if you love your mother or father or daughter or son more than me or your grandchild, you're not worthy of me. You know, every statement that Jesus made in the kingdom of God has deep meanings and values, precious child of God. If you really meditate them, what these statements are revealing to you or imparting wisdom to you to handle changes in life. When God said to me, if your daughter takes my place in your heart, your daughter cannot take my place in your heart. I was shocked. I said, what do you mean by this God? And he said, son, when, you're, when in the days to come, when your daughter changes, the same relationship that you have can pierce you and bring sorrow into your life. And in that, during those times, if you are not ready for it, you will drown. So everyone is going to change. There is a possibility for people to change, things to change, circumstances to change. But how a wise steward, a kingdom citizen, how will they keep their heads above the water is they are ready. They are ready for changes. They position themselves for changes. They prepare them for, for changes. 
So crisis can adversely affect you if you are overwhelmed by it, precious child of God. If you are not ready for the change, if you have not positioned yourself for a change, when that change comes, you will be overwhelmed. But if you are ready, when the change comes, you will not be overwhelmed, but you will overpower. So this is how kingdom works. You know, day by day, people are losing jobs, businesses are crashing, people are migrating, looking for greener pastures. You know, so much of things are happening around us. Uh, you need to understand, precious child of God, that you are in this world, but not of this world. Or rather, you are in this system, not of this system. So, if you function according to this system, the changes that are coming will adversely affect you and me. So, what I am trying to do here is to prepare you and me how to face when, not if, uh, when crisis comes. This is what I am trying to establish through this teaching this in the last couple of weeks. So that when a crisis comes, a son and daughter of the Father's house ministry, their house will stand, not fall apart. Precious child of God, I am debt free. This is not because I only prayed. This is because I practice kingdom principles. Because children of God think that only thing that they need to do in the kingdom is pray. When you pray, the Lord will give you the key, the kingdom key. And then you have to use the kingdom key. If you pray and just stop there and don't use the kingdom key, you're not going to see the breakthrough. So whatever keys that I have taught you, you have to use it. You can't sit on it. Because I'm telling you, God will take the entire world and he will shake it. Because he has prophesied. When God has prophesied, it, is, it will be fulfilled. It, not, it, may, it may not know, may, may not, will not work with God. When he speaks, it will happen. So he says, I am going to shake the heavens, shake the sea, shake the earth, shake all nations. This morning I was meditating uh, Exodus, Exodus uh, and God is saying, I will bring a division because God sends Moses to, uh, to confront Pharaoh and the Lord says, I will bring a division between Israelites and the Egyptian. Egypt is a picture of world. Egypt is a picture of sin. So God says to Moses, I will bring a division between Israelites and the Egyptians. God will bring a division between kingdom and the world when he shakes. When he shakes the heavens, the earth, the sea and all nations, he will bring a division between the kingdom people and the worldly people. So, if you are operating in the worldly principles when he shakes, even though you are born again, you will drown. But those who are born again and, and operating in the kingdom principles, when God shakes, they will stand. So what are some of the crises? I'm just trying to show you. Loss of job is a crisis. Death of a child is a crisis. Some of you have gone through it. Having an autistic child. Child addicted to drugs. Loss of your house. Divorce. 
Some of you have gone through these crises, terminal illnesses, death of a parent. Some of you live as if it is your parents will never die. This is why I say, some of you never prepare yourself for change. You think your parents will live forever. And you don't want to accept the change. And when they pass away, you are unable to handle it. Prepare yourself for changes. Unplanned pregnancy. Pregnant daughter who is unmarried. Death of a spouse. Business collapses. Now some of these are, these I'm just showing you. These are changes that can happen in our life. I'm not asking you to position yourself for to, these things to happen, but if these kind of changes happen, how are you going to handle it? You know, impact of crisis is fear, trauma, depression, despair, anxiety, frustration, worry, hopelessness, Loneliness, suicidal, abuse, drug addiction, these are impact of crisis. When you don't prepare yourself for a change, when the change comes, which is a crisis, you will fall into either one of these categories. Fear will grip you, trauma will grip you, depression will grip, grip, grip you, despair, anxiety, frustration, worry, hopelessness, loneliness, suicidal and abuse addictions so if you are not prepared if you don't if you're not understanding what i'm saying my precious child of god in this world there is trouble jesus said if you're not prepared for change when the change happens you will not be able to handle it and get trapped to one of these things of the devil this is why you and i need to take control of our lives we have to take control of our lives. If not, crisis will take control of us. And I know some of you are listening to me are already under the control of crisis. Crisis is inevitable. It will come. Change is already happening around us. And one day, change will confront you. It will be right in front of your face. If you are not positioned yourself, if you are not prepared yourself, you will be overwhelmed. Okay, so I'm, I'm talking practical life, precious children of God. Jesus never, you know, taught us fantasy life. He taught us practical life. You know, the positive impact of crisis is that unity comes. Unity comes. When a crisis comes, people get united of same group, same family. When, when crisis comes, they get united. Um, or you, you start to feel empathy. When you go through a crisis, then you look at somebody who's going through the same crisis, you feel empathy. If not, you will never feel that a rich person who has plenty of food will never feel the pain of a person who is going through hunger. But the day when they come to that place, they will feel empathy. Simplicity comes. When crisis comes, it brings simplicity into our life. It will pull us from the high horse that we are riding. We will come into simple life. You know, we, we try to become human. Humanity comes into our life when crisis hits. Because sometimes when people are doing well and they are blessed and beyond their socks and, and they're doing so well in life, they can't feel the other human's needs and pains and their, their needs. But when they, when crisis hits them, I have counseled people, you know, they have, you know, said these statements to me. I said, so, to me, is saying, Pastor, now I understand what people are going through. All this time, since I didn't have any problem, any crisis, I was so blessed. 
I didn't um, I didn't feel the pain. I didn't understand what people are going through. Uh, you know, some time back, a precious brother told me, why are you taking so much of time to pray over people? Why don't you finish the service early? I didn't tell him anything. Why do you take a lot of time to spend time to pray? But when he faced with crisis, when he came for altar call, and when I took time to pray, he said, I, 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 now I understand, Pastor. Because when crisis hits, then you become human. Humanity comes into you. When crisis comes, spirituality rises. You know, you become spiritual. It's, it's a very common symptom in many Christians today. When 9-11 when happened, all the churches were packed in USA. <laughs> Why? When crisis hits, people become spiritual. Some good impact of crisis. When crisis hits, we, try, we learn to prioritize our life. So crisis is good in a way, I would say. That is why God permit crisis. God does not send crisis, but he, he permits uh, for devil to send us through trials. So don't curse crisis. Okay. It could be a divine strategy of God. So to bring the high-minded to their knees. To bring us to the will of God. To bring spiritual awakening in our life. Crisis is very important. Sometimes crisis brings priority into our life. Crisis reawakens our spirituality. Crisis brings humanity into our life. Simplicity. Empathy and unity. So, God sometimes permits crisis sends trials our way so that we can step into the will of God. The character of Christ can be brought out and so much of good things can happen through crisis. So don't curse crisis. Okay? Now, now, precious children of God, I hope that you are receiving um, because it's very important. You know, the modern charismatic movement, listen to me, listen to me. The modern charismatic movement is only built for blessings, not for trials. Come to Jesus, he will bless you. Come to Jesus, you will never go through any crisis. Come to Jesus, he will give you a brand new BMW. Come to Jesus, next year you will live in a three-story building. Come to Jesus, you are flying to USA. Come to Jesus. You know, the modern charismatic movement is built, on, built only on blessing. It's true. It's true. I'm not saying it's not true, but they never include trials. The Bible talks about children of God going through trials as well, going through crisis. They never talk about that. So that is why many born again fall away from church because when the reality of crisis touches their life, they are shaken and said, I was never prepared for this and I was never taught I was always told that when I come to Jesus, there will be never a problem. I will always be blessed. So this is why today we have, we have raised up very shallow Christians. Christians who have the mindset, born again Christians who have the mindset saying, 
nothing will change in my life. Everything will remain the same. I will always be blessed and I will always, uh, you know, thrive and I will always, you know, do things, this and that and blessed and no bad can come in my life. Not that we position ourselves for uh, bad things, but precious child of God, but we position ourselves for changes. If it comes, we will handle it. That's what I'm trying to teach here. I hope that you are with me. So today, we have raised up many baby Christians, shallow Christians, immature Christians. The moment they go through a little small crisis, I'm not going to church. I don't want to come to church. I don't want to do anything with God. I don't want to serve God. See what has happened to me after coming to church. You laid hands and prayed over me. See what has happened to me. I gave my tithes. See what has happened to me. Can't God see? Is he blind? Is he deaf? Why? Because we have raised up with only a doctrine called you will never go through crisis. Bible says trials produce patience. Patience produce character. Character produce hope. Hope produces glory. So trials are part of kingdom life. This is what I'm coming at. Tri trials or crises are what? Unplanned changes. Unexpected changes. So God does not want you to be, you know, unplanned. God does not want you to be ignorant. God wants you to prepare yourself. If a change comes, this is how I'm going to handle it. Oh, change is never going to come. Trials are never going to come. Crises are never going to come. If you position yourself like that, when the crisis hits you, a change comes in your life. Bang, you're on the floor. Knocked out. First round. God does not want you to be a, a, a child like that. He wants you to be a house that will wither any storm, any change, any crisis. Amen? So, kingdom faith is not only for good times. Kingdom faith is unshakable even during hard times. Are you with me? Jesus raised up the disciples, tough, strong, ready to face any challenge. That's why he, he took them on journeys where storms came. So Jesus wants to check. The, that's why he didn't inform them, precious children of God, the storm, storm is coming. He only said, let's go to the other side. So he wants to see their mindset, their mentality, their positioning with, when an unexpected change comes. How will they react? That's what he wanted to check. So when the storm came, they, they panicked and their behavior was very bad. And Jesus said, what is this? Why are you so fearful? Jesus trained the disciples to go through trials Dangers, crisis, and raise them up very strong. And that's how I want to raise up children in the Father's house. Yes, the Lord will bless you. You will be blessed and you will become a blessing to many. Whilst that is happening, if a crisis comes, when a crisis comes, will you stand? You have to stand how we should be raised up. So kingdom faith is not only for good times, precious child of God. Kingdom faith is unshakable even during hard times. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is the hall of fame, you know, of great men, of women, of faith. So it talks about how men and women of faith difficult times. Hebrews chapter 11, 36 to 39. 
I want to show you something very, very important. Now watch this. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. These are disciples. The, the, the writer to the Hebrew is talking about his disciples. Some face jeers and flogging, that is uh, whipping, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sowed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in the deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for what? For their faith. Because of their faith, see what they went through, precious children of God. Yet, my goodness, look at this. Yet, none of them received what they had been promised. My, me. Pastor promise Karana at Ambu in the morning. No hanky panky. If he promises, I won't budge. I must get it. But the Bible says these heroes of faith, yet none of them received what they had been promised. This is true faith, children of God. This is true character of kingdom. This is true character of a kingdom citizen. I hope that you can receive this stuff. I hope that you are matured enough to receive this stuff. So, Bible commends them for their faith. All they went through was crisis and they didn't even receive their promise. But they were steadfast till the end. This is how kingdom raises up disciples. You know, kingdom of God has crisis faith. Not faith only in good times. It has crisis faith. Faith in the lion's den. Faith in the fire furnace. Faith in the prison. Faith when hope is dead. This is kingdom faith. Kingdom faith is not only in good times. Kingdom faith is, can you have faith when you're put inside a lion's den? There are hungry lions are waiting to rip the human. Can you have faith while you've been thrown into a furnace of fire? Can you have faith when you're shut behind bars? Can you have faith when your womb is dead? When you're physically, your body is dying, when, you, when doctors have given up, can you have faith? Faith, kingdom faith is faith in crisis. Not faith in good times. Are you with me? Your faith is not genuine if it has not gone through test. Your faith and my faith is not genuine if it has not gone through test. When you take gold, how do they test whether it's, ro what do you call that, rose gold or roll gold, or I don't know, a fake gold they have, and the genuine gold. How do they test it? They put it in the fire. So trials or crisis is a must to prove and divide a kingdom citizen from the worldly citizen. There are some in the kingdom calling themselves kingdom citizens, whereas what will expose them is crisis. Yeah, there are Christians in the, in, in the church seated saying, Oh, I am a born again Christian. I am a child of God. I am kingdom citizen. And they will be exposed when? When crisis comes. That's when a true, genuine kingdom citizen is revealed. 
Anyone can say I'm born again and I'm a kingdom citizen, I'm a follower of Christ. And you can happily sit inside the church. But what will truly prove that you are a kingdom citizen and a true follower of Jesus Christ is crisis. Therefore, kingdom will permit crisis in our life to expose believers. So, a precious child of God, write these things down and meditate. Crisis don't destroy faith, it exposes it. You have to write this down and think. These are statements of the Holy Spirit of God. Crisis don't destroy faith. Crisis will expose faith. Fire that is endured is what makes you a gold vessel, not the fire that you escaped. Fire that is endured is what makes you a gold vessel, not the fire that you escaped. Think about it. Gold cannot become gold if it runs away from fire. It has to endure the fire. Go with me to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2 verse 20 and 21. I hope that you are receiving today. I don't know how many of you are receiving today. I am raising up soldiers in the Father's house ministry. Not I am. Rather, uh, it should change. Holy Spirit of God is raising up soldiers in the kingdom not billionaires. Okay? If you're part of the Father's House ministry, you are raised up as a soldier to advance the kingdom of God. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 and 21 Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. That's what I wanted to comment. He changes times and seasons. So God will change times and seasons. Sometimes even to expose your faith. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to their discerning. So understand, precious child of God, there are times in your life God will change the times and the seasons to expose you, to test you and see how strong you are. Changes are coming. Changes are inevitable. And if you are not prepared, you will be surprised. You will be shocked. Why many of us are depressed and disappointed? Because you never expected a change. Things will remain the same. I, I, I just prepare myself, precious child of God. Anything, I just prepare. Be prepared. Be prepared for anything. Be prepared for anything. You will go through waters. God didn't say, if you go through the waters. He said, when you go through the waters, I will be with you. You will go through fire. When you go through the fire, God said, not if. Who do you think? Who do I think? Am I God? No. We are not God. We are humans. We will go through challenges, changes, 
change, expect it, expect it, expect it. You know, the, for the Chinese and the Japanese, I told you this previously also, crisis is an opportunity. Crisis is an opportunity for them. Crisis they look at as opportunity. In the kingdom of God, crisis is opportunity, precious child of God. Fiery furnace exists. Lion's den exists. Red Sea exists. Jordan still exists. But there are opportunities. There are opportunities, precious child of God, to expose your faith and to reveal his greatness. All of these crises and challenges do exist. If it is dense lion's den for Daniel, it could be something else for you today. If it is for the Red Sea for the Israelites, it could be something else for you today. If it is was furnace fire for the Shatrak, Meshach and Abednego, it could be something else for you today. Crisis is an opportunity to expose your faith, number one. Number two, to reveal his greatness. Look at crisis as an opportunity. I will prove my faith, God, in this crisis. And I will see your greatness, God. So most people lose it during crisis. Most people. That is what's happening in the world and that's what's happening in the church. Most people lose it during crisis. Why? Not prepared. Not expected a change. The worry is the major concern that which leads to stress, which is the main cause for many sicknesses. So this is why kingdom says, do not worry. So some people have come and asked me, Pastor Jesus said, do not worry. The things that is happening, tell me how not to worry. I'm teaching you, saying, position yourself for changes. So when the changes happen, you are ready. Because Jesus is not a, you know, a, a lunatic to just say, do not worry, do not worry. He's God Almighty. The words that comes out of his mouth are spirit and life. He, just, he, he don't just, uh, you know, uh, jabber like us. He means what he says. So when he says, do not worry, what God wants you to do is change is inevitable. Prepare for it. That's what God is saying. So that when it comes, you will not worry. He changes times and seasons. But don't worry, precious child of God. You know, everything motivated by heaven is good. Everything ever, heaven allows is good. The problem with us is the definition that we have about good. The Bible says, James 1.17 says, watch, watch here. Everything that comes from the Father of light is perfect and good. Okay? So, whatever heaven motivates, everything good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So I told you, God is the only person who will never change. Everything else will change. So everything is coming from heaven, motivated by heaven, is good. And Everything heaven allows is good. So even the crisis that heaven permits in your life is good. So the definition we have, the definition of good for us, 
is some it's wrong for us crisis is bad but that crisis can be good for heaven <laughs> because heaven knows that crisis is going to bring priority into your lives that crisis is going to bring spirituality into your life that crisis is going to bring humanity and humility into your life so heaven looks at its they look at that crisis as good but you look at it the definition of good is sometimes wrong with us go with, go with me to luke chapter 18 you know whatever i'm t teaching i'm provoking your mind to think this kind of teaching you may have not heard and when you hear this you i may sound like an heretic to you a, a, a false teacher but i want you to probe the bible i want you to go into deep to the teachings of jesus and the apostles and see whether what I'm seeing is true. Luke chapter 18, verse 18 and 19. You know, when the Spirit of the Lord speaks, He will challenge you. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. So Jesus is saying, God alone is good. The Father alone is good. Therefore, the definition of good he has will differentiate from you. What he looks at and calls is good may not look like good for me, but it is good for him because he alone is good. So what is good in your life, he will permit it to happen. And it could, be a, it could be a crisis for you, but it is good in his own eyes. Because it's going to bring something good out of you if you endure it. But you call it not good. It is for me. I can't go through this. And you don't bring out the intended results, what the Father wanted. So this is what I am saying. Don't curse crisis and say, a Christian should never go through crisis. If you go through crisis, now precious children of God, if you are living a wretched, sinful life, then obviously you are creating your own crisis. I'm talking in the context of a righteous child of God, a child of God who is living at his best to live for God and want to live a righteous life and you want to live a holy life. You want to stand right before God from the time you wake up in the morning until you go to bed. Your heart desire is to stand right before God and to walk holy before Him. And still you're going through crisis. I'm talking about that kind of a person, not the person who is willfully living in sin and going through crisis. That is different. If you're willfully living in sin and going through crisis, you deserve it and and that is not from god that's you have opened the door for the devil but if you're a righteous child yet you're going through crisis don't look at curse look crisis and call it curse it is it may look good in the eyes of god to bring the best out of you that is why shatrak meshach abednego looked at pharaoh and said our God is mighty to save us from this fire. Even if he does not save, yet we are ready to go through this. That is maturity. That is real maturity. That is real character of kingdom. So if you are walking upright, blameless, holy before God, you are going through crisis, could it be that the Lord has permitted it to happen to bring something out of you? 
something good out of you. That is my argument. That is the case that I am presenting because crisis is part of the kingdom of God. So is it good to go through fire? Is it good to go through fire? Is it good to go through waters? It is good to go through size crisis? If God thinks it is good to go through, let's go through. If God thinks it is good for Raja to go through fire, okay sir, I am ready to go through. If God thinks that Raja should go through waters, that is good for him, ready sir, I am ready to go through. That's what I am talking about. Because he only knows the definition of good. Amen. You and I, precious child of God, you and I wouldn't have known about the three Hebrew boys today in this 21st century. You and I wouldn't have known the names of the three Hebrew boys if not for the fiery furnace. Today we are talking about Shatrach, Meshach, Abednego. Three Hebrew boys. After so many decades, why is that? Because they went through the fire. You never know the crisis what you are going through is a preparing ground for the pedestal that is waiting for you in the future. You may not see it, but if you endure it, the platform is waiting for you. That's what I'm talking about. Crisis. Permitted by God when you walk upright before Him is going to be a blessing to you. Amen? So you don't generally keep remembering the good things people did. But you do remember the hard times they came through. Okay? I may forget the, the good things that Sean did. But when I look at his life, I will always remember the hard times that he has come through. Because it's a testimony. I may look at Inzar and I may forget the good things that he did. But when he has come through hard times and made it in life, I will always remember it. You will never forget the hard times that you went through in life and made it. Because it is inscripted within you. It is written inside of you. This is why you, you should not hold back your testimonies. Because people will remember your testimony. How you made it through crisis. You know, history is a record of crisis. We remember how people overcame, our nations overcame. How we won our independence, how people fought for it. History is about crisis. So this is why Hebrews chapter 11 is written, precious child of God. Heroes of faith. That is why Hebrews chapter 11 is totally dedicated to heroes of faith. How they went through trials. How they went through so much of difficult times yet made it in life. Because that shows their character, their consistency, their maturity in the kingdom. The kingdom of God, why am I saying all of these things? Is kingdom of God analyzes the maturity of a child of God by how you handle crisis. Amen. The kingdom.
kingdom of God calls crisis an opportunity. This is why you don't worry. Jesus said, don't worry. I have eight more minutes. I will read this scripture and uh, I will prove it to you from the Bible that, you know, that you need to prepare yourself for change. Then you will face crisis better. That you will not get depressed, despair, anxiety, worry. No, if you prepare yourself for change, you position yourself well to face crisis. Be, be ready for changes, then you will handle crisis well. I'm going to prove it to you from the Bible. Go with me to John chapter 16 and verse 1 to 4. We'll read this and close. John chapter 16, verse 1 to 4. This is how Jesus raised up his disciples, okay? Watch. He didn't raise up, you know, hanky-panky, wimpy, uh, you know, read like shaking disciples. This is how he raised up his disciples. All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. Keep it there, Sean. All this I have told you that you will not fall away. Why so many born-again Christians are falling away today in churches? Because they have not told the truth. The charismatic movement that is happening in churches today have only told one side of the truth not the other side that is why when crisis comes immature baby Christians are falling away one telephone bill is enough for the devil to send you to make you depressed one telephone bill the born again child of God is depressed that's how wrong you are in the Lord. So Jesus is telling, all this I have told you so that you will not fall away. I am telling you all of this to you, Father's house ministry, so that you will not fall away. Watch what Jesus is saying. They will put you out of the synagogue. They will kick you out of the synagogue. He's telling his disciples. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will kick you out of the church. They will put you behind the prison. Next Sunday all the pews will be empty. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this. Oh my goodness, underline this in your Bible. I don't know why Christians miss these teachings of Jesus. I don't know why preachers miss these teachings of Jesus. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. What? They will kick you out of synagogues. They will put you behind bars. They will kill you. These things I warned you. And you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me where are you going. Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. Okay? So Jesus is, what, what is Jesus saying? He's saying, crisis is coming. Change is coming. Prepare yourself. I have warned you. I have told you these things. So prepare yourself. Position yourself. 
for change that is coming. This is what I am trying to teach, precious child of God. I am not saying that you will not be blessed. You know, the gospel is not only about blessing. You also must be a part of the suffering of Christ so that you can be glorified with him, says the Bible. So as much as you position yourself for blessing, also be ready for change. Change is crisis. Unexpected change is crisis. You never expected it to happen. It came and it is crisis. So prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for any change. Prepare that one day your parents will pass away. Prepare one day sometimes your spouse can pass away. Prepare that sometimes your child can go away. Prepare yourself that you, 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 you may lot lose your job. Prepare yourself that you may lose your house. Prepare yourself that people reject you. Prepare, Prepare for change. Then you will face crisis well. Be ready for anything and say, Lord, raise me up as a strong soldier. Soldiers are always anticipating any time any attack can come and you are ready so that when the change comes you're not depressed you're not you know uh, in anxiety worry stress sick we need to learn this truth we need to learn this key precious children of god that's how jesus raised up the disciples Okay, so we as the Father's house family must be raised up as strong sons and daughters of the kingdom, ready for anything. Amen. Time is up. Let's pray. Precious Father, we take this time to thank you for raising up strong children, children who are of the meat, and children who are prepared to face any challenge that comes their way. Children who are pillars in the kingdom of God, unshakable, unmovable, ever abounding in the truths and in the keys of the kingdom. Holy Spirit of God, when trouble comes, Help us to be so firm and strong in the convictions what you have taught us. And to remain standing whilst this crisis passes away. Precious child of God, if you are going through a crisis after walking closely with God, I am telling you that crisis is a passing cloud. It will pass away. But you will remain. You will stand. I'm telling you. Jesus said, A house that is built on my words, hearing my words and putting my words into practice, that house will never fall. So when you're practicing kingdom keys, you will never fall. Let it, let the storm rage, let the wind blow, let the rain come, let the floods rise. Keep moving forward, keep practicing what the kingdom keys you have been taught. You will not fall. Jesus said, I have said you these things that you will not fall away. And when you, when you have heard his words and as you practice, you will not fall away. The storm will pass away, the wind will pass away, the waves will pass away, but you will remain, you will keep standing. You will keep standing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray for every son and daughter who have walked upright before you and who are going through crisis. I thank you that you will you will create deep convictions within them, Lord, that they will 
not compromise, Father, that they will keep standing on the ground of truth and the truth will set them free. Lord, I release your grace for every child of God who's going through crisis, every family that is going through crisis. I release your grace, what they need to endure this season, Lord. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit of God, your comfort will remain with them. And I thank you that this crisis, they are enduring because they wanted to walk upright before you. Make them gold vessels, O oh God. Thank you that this crisis is purifying them, refining them, and making them gold vessels, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you that this crisis is bringing something good and beautiful out of these children in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. May his grace be sufficient for you. May his grace be sufficient for you. May his grace be sufficient for you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everyone say amen. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this study. Hoping to see you on Friday for Spiritual Undercover. Um, if you're going through crisis, um, I encourage you to stay firm and strong because something good is coming out of you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. In every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. But who can stop the Lord Almighty?
There's no place I would rather be. 